Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Gray Matter. In today's video, we're going to be going over email authentication standards, specifically DCAM, SPF, and DMARC. We'll start with what spoofing is and how it's beneficial to threat actors. And then we'll talk about SMTP and what makes spoofing possible. Lastly, we'll break down the types of email authentication and why they're needed. Let's jump right into it. So what is email spoofing? Email spoofing is when a threat actor forges the email syntax and fakes the email header so they can manipulate and control what the sender address shows to the end user. Unless the user examines the email header more closely, they may not even notice. This is a way that threat actors exploit the human factor, and it's actually incredibly easy to do. Spoofing has various benefits for threat actors, and there are four reasons why they may use this method. A threat actor may fish the user and pretend to be a recipient that they trust in order to get them to click a malicious link or open an attachment that contains malware. An example of this may be spoofing a password reset link to a website so the users enter their credentials after clicking on the attacker's special link. Spoofing also makes it easier to commit identity theft, and they could be asking for personal and confidential information. They could also be avoiding spam filters when previous emails are blacklisted. Finally, anonymity is a reason for spoofing, where a fake address may be used to hide a sender's identity, possibly when sending threats. Spoofing is possible from the lack of authentication security found in the way that mail is sent. SMTP, which is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol on port 25, is the foundation of how emails are sent. When it was designed, there was no requirement for authentication, and this is the core vulnerability of this technology. Other than authentication, SMTP also lacks encryption and any other real security features. The reason for this lack of security features is that when many of these protocols were designed, there wasn't any internet that connected people from all over. Networks were closed off, and things were relatively secure as they were. Despite the lack of any real security features, there are complementary authentication standards to help mitigate spoofing. The top three are DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. So let's start with DKIM. DKIM is Domain Keys Identified Mail, and it protects email senders and recipients from spam, spoofing, and phishing. This adds a digital signature to the headers of an email message, and that signature acts as a watermark and can be validated against a cryptographic key in the company's DNS records. The way this works is that the domain owner publishes a cryptographic public key as a specially formatted TXT record into the domain DNS records. When a message is sent by the outbound mail server, the server generates and attaches a unique DKIM signature header to the message. The DKIM signature is a header that is added to email messages that allows the receiving mail server to validate the email message. The signature looks something like this. Let's break this header down. First, we have A equals RSA dot SHA1, where A represents the signing algorithm. Q equals the default query method, so DNS. D is the signing domain, which is being identified. I is the user agent, and the value of the email address containing the domain or subdomain is defined in the signing domain. S is listed as june2005.eng, and that's the selector. A selector is part of the DKIM record that allows publishing multiple DKIM keys on the domain. It can also be reused across domains, but a specific domain can only publish one key on a specific selector. C is Relax Simple, which is the canonicalization algorithm. This means that the algorithm defines to a mailbox provider what level of modifications can be present in the email after it's in transit to the mailbox provider. These modifications can include white space or line wrapping, and some servers can make minor modifications to the email during transit, which can invalidate the signature. T is the signature timestamp, and X is the expire time. H is the list of the signed header fields that are repeated for fields that occur multiple times. B is the actual digital signature of the contents, including the headers in the body of the mail message. Some things not listed in this header that may be listed in others are BH, or the body hash, and the version. Next is SPF. SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework and is another standard that protects from spam, spoofing, and phishing. This links an authorized sender to your domain and is a way to validate that an email is sent from an authorized mail server in order to detect forgery and prevent spam. The way this works is also similar to DNS. And like DKIM, SPF also uses a TXT record. Each time a recipient receives an email, 
This information will be checked through an SMTP conversion, which is a communication between mail servers. There are publishing records that show who is allowed to send emails from an organization's domain. This record may include the IP address of a company's exchange server. Here's an example of what one of the records may look like. V equals SPF1 is telling the server that this contains an SPF record, and each SPF record must begin with a string. Next is what is known as the guest list portion of the SPF record, and this is a list of authorized IP addresses. In this specific case, the SPF record is indicating and telling the server that both listed IP4 addresses are authorized to send emails on behalf of the domains. Include colon examplesender.net is an example of the include tag, and that tells the server that which third-party organizations are authorized to send emails on behalf of the domain. At the end, negative all tells the server that the addresses are not listed in the SPF record, are not authorized to send emails, and should be rejected. I'd like to also note that there is an alternative, and that tilde all can state that unlisted emails will be marked as insecure or spam, but are still accepted, and plus sign all, which means that the server can send emails on behalf of your domain. In order to publish an SPF record, first, all the senders from the domain must be identified, and this includes internal email servers, ESPs or email service providers, or other sources from automated transactional emails. Make sure to identify all the domains the organization owns, and each subdomain should have its own SPF record. And this is important since a company could use various domains and subdomains. Cover all your bases for these, even if the domain isn't being used, and this is to prevent spoofing. Finally, you can publish the SPF record to the DNS record. The last authorization standard of the video is DMARC. DMARC is Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting Conformance, and this is a record that you can publish at the DNS register. This has to be set up after the SPF and DKIM because these instructions will be what are provided to do if an email coming from your organization fails either the SPF or DKIM. Along with relying on established SPF and DKIM standards, it piggybacks off of DNS. The steps can either be none, quarantine, or reject. None treats the mails the same as if it would without any DMARC validation and leaves it up to the recipient of the organization's security and policy. The quarantine, which means don't allow them to make it to an inbox and send to a secure place, such as a spam filter. Or reject, and that means that the server simply will not accept the email and rejects it outright. It's important to make note that the domain owner can only request and not force the enforcement of its DMARC record. It all ends up to how the inbound mail server is set up and whether the requested policy is honored. One interesting part of DMARC is that you can set up reports, and these can be looked at and monitored to see who is attempting to spoof the address. The two types of reports are aggregate reports and forensic reports. Aggregate reports are XML documents that show statistical data about the messages received and claimed to be from a particular domain. Forensic reports are individual copies of the messages that failed authentication. These are used in troubleshooting a domain's own authentication and for identifying malicious domains and websites. Here's a DMARC policy example. Let's break it down. V equals DMARC1 shows that this is a TXT record and contains a DMARC policy that should be interpreted by the email server. P equals quarantine means that the email server should quarantine all emails that fail DKIM and SPF, since they're probably spam. As mentioned before, other settings are none and reject. ADKIM equals S means that the DKIM checks are strict, and this can also be set to relax by changing the S to an R after ADKIM equals. ASPF equals S is the same rule as ADKIM, so it's still strict. A cool website that you can check out is mxtoolbox.com, and you can see what kind of DMARC setup a website has. And they also have instructions on how to set up your own for your website. I'll leave that and other links in the description below. Thanks for watching! I hope you know a little more about email authentication and how to prevent spoofing, spam, and phishing. Please leave a like and drop any questions you may have down in the comment section below. Thanks!